Welcome to Speaking of Business. I'm Goldie Heider, President and CEO of the Business Council of Canada. Last week, we heard some sobering yet not surprising news from the Governor of the Bank of Canada. Tiff Macklem said it will take quite some time for the economy to recover fully from the COVID-19 pandemic. So what do we need to do now to help that recovery along and to ensure that when the health crisis is over, the Canadian economy is stronger and more resilient than before? It's a question we have been focused on at the Business Council, and today we're going to walk through our roadmap of how we think it is that we can get there. Joining me to discuss all of this is our new Senior Vice President of Policy, Robert Asselin. Welcome, Robert. Good to be with you, Goldie. Robert may be a familiar name to many of our listeners. His distinguished career includes work as an academic and an advisor to business. In addition, for more than 10 years, he provided economic advice to government, including as a policy and budget director to former finance minister Bill Morneau, and as a policy advisor to not one, but two prime ministers, Paul Martin and Justin Trudeau. Robert, let's talk about the report we released last week. So Goldie, the report is called Barring a Strong Recovery, an Economic Growth Plan for Canada. It's a bold plan to move us forward, a roadmap, as you say, to address some of the structural challenges that we faced as an economy. And some of those obviously are well known, but it's worth maybe, you know, declining them a bit. The first is we're an aging population and that puts a lot of pressure on our labor market and into our productivity. We also have a trade account deficit, which means that we import more goods and services than we produce. We also struggle to grow firms to scale. Essentially, we stay too much at the SMEs level and not able to grow global players. And lastly, with the current crisis, we have increased our fiscal debt, our debt to GDP ratio substantially. So those are kind of the big picture problems that we need to address with this roadmap and plan to grow the economy. Well, it's interesting, you know, one of the things that we hear from the government and have for the last six years is things were great before the virus, right? We had low unemployment. We had very low debt to GDP ratio. Our economy was strong and growing. And yet many of the things that you've identified appear to be challenges that existed before the pandemic. Do you feel that COVID-19 has in fact exacerbated the urgency with which these issues need to be dealt with? Yes, I do. I think now there's an urgency to act on those because obviously what COVID has done is just put us in a more vulnerable situation on the economic front. So the response needs to be much more intentional economic policy, a less laissez-faire economic policy than we had before because other countries are moving aggressively on their own strategy. So from a competitive competitiveness standpoint, we need to move forward. And I just want to say, Goldie, our our plan is pretty straightforward. It has kind of three main ideas or three pillars. The first one is people. The second is capital. And the third is ideas. So let's unpack those in in order if we can then. So let's start with people. And the good news, of course, is, is that Canada has a lot going for it, especially when it comes to our human resources. We have a well-educated population, a very robust immigration system, which Canadians continue to support and understand the value of immigration to our economy. How can we do better? Well, on the people side, we're going to have, we're already seeing it, a big disruption in our labor market. So that means we're going to have to rescale a lot of folks for the jobs of tomorrow. And that will require government to kind of tackle this problem. We're also going to need to double down on immigration because we need skilled immigrants to come and enhance our productivity. And we've had great success on that, but we need to double down on immigration. And the last point I can mention on the people side is there are many groups in society, unfortunately, that don't have the chance to participate in the labor market as much as others. And so we need to focus on those, including obviously getting more women to join the labor force and childcare is a key lever there. Indigenous Canadians, racialized Canadians, and we have great ideas to get us there, but we need to focus on that so that everyone has a fair shot at working in good jobs for the future of Canada. 
Yeah, I think that's a really, really great point, right? We've got to make use, full use of the talent that already is in Canada. And as I think you and I both hear from our business leaders, even if we did that, there's still going to be a need for more labor. And, you know, immigration equals population growth, population growth equals economic growth. So very important points there. Thank you, Robert. Let's talk about the capital piece. You know, we've been calling for improvements here for years because as I think we know capital has choices and options. Why is it so important when it comes to the average person? Why should they care about how capital and capital investment impacts their daily lives or their standard of living? Yeah, very simply, business investment is what really drives growth and good paying jobs. And Canada has been lagging on that front compared to other industrialized countries. So we need to create a, what I call an enabling environment to make sure that business have the least obstacles possible to invest. And what are those? Infrastructure is an important one. And we have work to do there. We've started, but there's still a long way to go. Gateways, for example, to enable trade. The second may be interprovincial trade barriers. As you know, this is a longstanding problem. We often criticize tariffs that were put on us by the U.S., but we have to realize that between provinces, there are still considerable barriers that effectively act as tariffs. So we need to remove those. And on the regulatory side, we need to make it simpler for business to invest. And so approvals, construction permits, all that stuff is super important. And lastly, maybe on the enabling environment part, I will say we need to keep our taxes competitive because as you said, capital is very mobile. And if our taxes are too high, people will just go invest elsewhere. Well said. I mean, I always say that money follows message, but so do people. People have a lot of choices around the world. So the critical importance of those pillars. Now, the third pillar, which I know is very uh, near and dear to your heart, having come to us from BlackBerry, and that's the issue of, of ideas, you know, what some would call innovation, if you will. What do you think is the best way to describe what it is that we're trying to do here? I, I like the analogy the report uses about the Olympics. You know, it's somewhat of an own the podium model. You know, why would we train our people only to go win gold medals for another country? Tell us more about uh, what you'd like to see in the ideas bucket. I think there are the simple idea, the simple premise is that more and more wealth creation will come from intellectual capital, from ideas, from what we have in our brain. And so we have to cultivate that, leverage that, retain that in Canada. And so we need to get much better at getting our ideas to market, commercializing our research, and also protecting it, making sure it remains in Canada. So the intellectual property part is super important. And we have not paid too much attention to this, but we need to more and more because intellectual property becomes an asset that defines how the economy and the potential of the economy to grow. So we need to pay much more attention to this. A lot has been said about Canadian R&D, that we can do better. How can we do better? So I think it comes with a sense of purpose and ambition. And I think COVID gives us this platform. Let me do just an analogy, Goldie. You know, John F. Kennedy, when he's president, goes at Rice University in, in 1960, and he says... We're going to send the men to the moon before the end of the decade. And then it kind of mobilized all the researchers in the country, the industries, the businesses, and it creates an amazing, powerful innovation system, ecosystem that is now known as the United States. I think we can do something like this. We need a, a sense of mission. I need a, a sense of challenges and a sense of ambition. And we have one of the best researchers in Canada. There's no reason why we cannot get these ideas to market and grow our economy with it. I want to tie these three together if I can, because as you know, people's anxiety levels these days is quite high. We've suffered through a pandemic. There's been shock to our health system and our economic system. And even before that, people were being told that jobs are changing, the workforce is changing. What reassurance can you give Canadians that these ideas are in their interest and are good for them. Yeah, at the end of the day, economic growth is not a finality. As you just uh, well said, Goldie, it's a means to attain a better standard of living. And so if you don't grow the pie, 
at the end, it'll be the Canadian family standards of living that will suffer as a result of it. And we should not take this for granted, you know. It's really important that we keep focusing on growth because if we don't, it will be a, a direct impact on how we prosper as a nation. And I think we need to have a lot of resolve, but we need to be optimistic. We have the foundation to succeed. We're an amazing country with a good foundation on the human capital side, on the people side. We have plenty of ideas. We can solve the capital piece as well. And so what we need is really to be more intentional about what we're trying to achieve. And lastly, the last thing I'll say is, I think this if this crisis has showed us something, is that working government working with businesses work. And we've just proved it through COVID and we can do it at a larger scale for the challenge that lies ahead. What a great spot to end. Listen, Robert, thank you so much for joining us here and, and, and really teasing out parts of the report. There's much more in content and we would love to hear from our listeners. We know you're well-informed and interested in the country and its well-being. So over the coming months, we're gonna be reaching out to stakeholders and decision makers and individuals to hear your ideas about this roadmap and to make it even better. So we invite you to, to stay in touch and uh, reach out anytime. Thanks again, Robert, for doing this. Merci, Goldie. It was a pleasure. You can read our full report on our website at thebusinesscouncil.ca. If you'd like to hear more of our Speaking of Business conversations with innovators, leaders, and entrepreneurs, why not subscribe to our podcast? You can find them wherever you get your podcasts. Look for Speaking of Biz, that's biz with a Z, or just go to our website. I'm Goldie Hyder here with Robert Asselin. Thanks for joining us. Stay safe, everyone.